And before starting the video, I would like to thank and advance Ford Motor Company for all the information, images, and video clips shown here in this video. All images and videos are from the Ford Motor Company press releases, and that is available to the public. I have listed the links down below. We've heard it, and we've seen it. We dreaded the name and wondered if it was real, or an early April Fool's prank. Well, prank it isn't. It really is called the Mustang Mach-E. First off, here's my position on it. My opinions, and then we can move on to the brass tacks. The actual concept of this vehicle is great. I love the idea, and I actually like the way it looks. It's familiar, it seems friendly and approachable, as a car can be, to me, and it looks a lot like the 2020 Ford Escape, and that's a good thing. But that name, oh that name. Why oh why did Ford decide on tagging this with the Mustang nameplate? I believe it's mostly because of name recognition, something extremely important when introducing a new car, especially an electric car. That said, never, ever, ever since 1964 did the Mustang ever have four doors. At one point it did have a lift gate, but never four doors. Honestly, I would have resurrected a legacy name, and Ford has a lot of good ones, but Comet or Maverick comes to mind. Mostly Comet. Okay, now that we got that over with, now on to what really matters. What this vehicle is, and what its capabilities are. Alright, as you can see here, the Mustang Mach-E comes in several different trim levels, starting with Select. Goes all the way up to the Premium, California Route 1, the GT, and of course, to end it all, the first edition, which will be more limited. It'll also have its own unique color scheme. Here are all the different color palettes available for all the different Mustang Mach-E's. Not shown is the Grabber Blue Metallic that's only available on the launch edition. All batteries in the Mach-E are lithium-ion cells with nickel-manganese cobalt cathodes. They feature active liquid cooling, are fully recyclable, and does not require service or maintenance. And the lineup starts with the Select. The Select features a 75.7 kilowatt hour battery and is available in rear wheel drive or for $2,700 more you can opt for it to be all wheel drive. Rear wheel drive range is estimated at 230 miles with the all wheel drive range estimated to be 210 miles. Peak power is 190 kilowatts or 255 horsepower and the Select's MSRP starts at $43,895. The Premium features a standard 75.7 kilowatt hour battery in rear wheel drive configuration, optional all wheel drive and features the same power figures as the Select. In addition, one can opt for the extended range battery for $5,000. This is the rear wheel drive with a 98.8 kilowatt hour battery with a peak power of 210 kilowatts or 282 horsepower. Range is estimated to be around 300 miles. If you want the extended range in all-wheel drive, that is an additional $7,700 and uses the same 98 kilowatt hour battery with 248 kilowatts or 332 horsepower. Estimated range is 270 miles. Starting MSRP for the premium is $50,600. And moving up from there is a California Route 1 edition. Only one powertrain is available on this uh, trim level and it's the extended range rear-wheel drive platform. No other configuration is available. This uses a 98.8 kilowatt hour battery with a 210 kilowatts or 282 horsepower and is good for an estimated 300 mile range on a single charge. California Route 1 editions have a starting MSRP of $52,400. And after the Route 1 we have the first edition in price hierarchy. First editions are limited production vehicles and currently are the only Mach-E's available with the exclusive Grabber Blue metallic paint. First editions, like the California Route 1 edition, feature only one powertrain, and that is the extended range all-wheel drive configuration. This uses a 98.8 kilowatt hour battery with 248 kilowatts or 332 horsepower. The limited editions are good for 270 miles of range, and first editions have a starting MSRP of $59,800 or $900. And finally, we have the GT. The GT is the only available in the extended range all-wheel drive configuration and is currently the most expensive of all the Mach-E's. Battery capacity is 98.8 kilowatt hours with a target range of 250 miles. While Ford has yet to release the peak power for the GT powertrain, it is targeting 342 kilowatts or 459 horsepower and almost 630 pound-feet of torque. The Mach-E GT MSRP start around $60,500. 
and Mach-E's can be charged in the same way that is typical of electric vehicles. Ford states that the Mach-E will gain 3 miles per charging hour on a 120 volt standard household outlet, or 22 miles per charging hour on a household 240 volt outlet. If you connect the Mach-E to a Ford connected Wi-Fi enabled charge station, overnight charging gains 32 miles per charge hour. On a 150 kilowatt DC fast charge system, you gain 47 miles of range in approximately 10 minutes, and go from 10% to 80% charge in 45 minutes. Ford offers two years of complimentary access to the Ford Pass charging network. All Mach-E sit on a 117 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 186 inches. Inside the Mach-E is very reminiscent of that of a Tesla vehicle with a large touchscreen dominated overall flat dash. The large portrait oriented touchscreen is 15 and a half inches and contains all aspects of the vehicle's controls including vehicle overview and summary, settings, navigation, audio, and Bluetooth controls, as well as climate controls. Directly in front of the driver is a small landscape-oriented 10.5 inch driver display that shows your range to empty, current gear selection, assorted warning lights, and speed. Cargo capacity with the rear seats up is 29 cubic feet. When you fold the rear seats, that expands to 59.6 cubic feet, and up front in the front trunk, that features 4.8 cubic feet of cargo capacity. So yes, there's a lot of information in this video, a lot of it in a small amount of time. But I hope I have done a pretty good overall job of kind of explaining the ins and outs, the different trim levels, um, and their capabilities. Overall, a lot of us were disappointed, I have to be honest, when Ford released the naming of the Mustang Mach-E. And then when they show what the vehicle looked like, uh, it became even more of a disappointment because, as stated before... The, the Mustang is not an SUV. But now that I've actually done some more research and I've actually looked into the vehicle, I do actually like the, the Mach-E itself. Not a fan of the name. I, I know why. I have feelings I know why Ford did it, but I'm still not a fan of it. But overall, I like the actual vehicle. I like the style. I like the exterior. I like the interior. I like the direction that Ford is going. I'm excited to see what Lincoln has to offer with this platform. So overall, I think it's a win. I can't wait to see it. We'll be seeing these in the near future. February of 2021 is when they're supposed to be starting to hit dealerships. All right, and this does conclude this video. If you liked it and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.